My name is Lori Bradner with the Florida Aviation Network, and we are broadcasting live and in the clear from the terminal building at Sebring, Sebring Regional Airport. And we're celebrating 14 years of the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo. The theme this year is flying into the future. And I have to tell you, I've got the best job in the world because I get to talk to the coolest people in the world. And next to me right now is one of my favorite people to talk to. I don't know how I got so lucky, Steve, but I am here today with Steve McCaughey from the Seaplane Pilots Association. Steve, you are by far, you are a <laughs> pilot's pilot. You are one of the coolest guys that I've ever met. And I have to tell you, it is such a joy to have you with us again. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. How do I live up to that? You, you, wow, you just, that's, you know that's, what? that's you huge. You smile at the camera, Steve, because you got that. I'm telling you, anybody who meets you, you are just an extraordinary, you've got such experience and you bring such energy oh, to the you. field of thank aviation. You. And I want to get right to the topic because this is something I've never done. I've never been in a seaplane. Steve, so we need to work this out. I was say, you might know someone that yeah, can help I you might, with that. Okay, so. that I'm going I'm to make, make a note of that, Obi. But I want to talk a little bit about the Seaplane Pilots Association, and I know that you've been with them since 2011. Yes, that's so correct. So what a tenure, and let's start from the beginning, because I know a lot of, of, a lot of people, they hear about it, especially in Florida. We uh, see these beautiful great. planes. We see planes landing on the water. How do you learn, how do you go about getting a license to fly one of those strange birds? <laughs> well, it's, it's actually fairly easy, so. Okay. Uh, Number one, you can reach out to the Seaplane Pilots Association, Excellent. and we have a directory of all the schools in the country, what kind of aircraft they use to train in. So if you have a specific kind of aircraft that you want to learn in, okay. because you may have aspirations of buying a similar aircraft, okay. uh, we can help you with that. Uh, but it also uh, lists the rates that they charge, and you know if they're seasonal because of the, the time of year, things like that, uh, we can help you with that. But it's actually really easy. So. Uh, two to three days uh, in most cases. Uh, okay, if you said days, days, not weeks. Not weeks. Two to okay. Uh, if, if a pilot has fairly good skill set, okay. fairly good stick and rudder skills, we can get them through in three days, I would say average. Okay. Uh, it also depends on the school and the level of training they want. If they want a more advanced course, they can spend some more time. But right now, there are many pilots out there doing the seaplane rating for under $2,000 in three days. That, that's amazing. Now, you are based out of Winter Haven. I am, yes. Correct. correct. Now, let me ask you, um, because, of course, even $2,000, uh, you know, that's that's still a sizable a little amount bit of, of money, amount a little of money. bit of money. Yeah. Um, definitely worth it, because I, just in talking to you, you are so energetic, and you just, I have to tell you, I can't imagine a pilot not having that <laughs> rating on their license. They need to have that, absolutely. But talk to me a little bit about that there is a seaplane rating scholarship program. You, there and is. And talk to us about that, and if you can talk to, um, just talk to our guests that are with us today about that, that opportunity. So uh, when I joined the association, one of the most important things for me to do was foster the next generation of seaplane pilots. So high on my list was create a scholarship program, which we immediately did. So we have, uh, it, it's the Tyler Orsau, uh, Chuck Kimes Memorial Scholarship. I lost two very good friends uh, in a seaplane incident, so we, we found it in their name. But uh, for young career track pilots, 18 to 25 years old, okay. uh, they can apply online at seaplanes.org. Okay. Uh, there's a scholarship uh, button that they can click on and uh, they can fill out the application process. And we award a dozen fully paid zero cost seaplane ratings a year. Uh, and we do that geographically spread between Alaska and Florida. So they don't they don't have to be in Winter Haven. No, they, they can don't. Do this at no, any we school. do it all across the country, and we wow. spread the awards out at events like this. So we'll be awarding here at okay. Sun and Fun at uh, the Northwest Aviation Conference next okay. month in Puyallup, Washington, uh, the Alaska Airmen's Show in Alaska the first week of May. Oshkosh. So we spread these awards out geographically around the country at these aviation events. And they and the recipients can go to any school of their choice in the United States. If they show up, we pay for the rating. 
Wow. Steve, so, what a fantastic opportunity. Yeah. yeah and thank what you. a tribute. And what it a is. legacy it is. for your friends. That's fantastic. Now let's go back to Winter Haven because I know um, that you're based in Winter Haven, but there's some very exciting things happening in the future. You have yeah, big is. dreams. We do. And <laughs> I tell you what, I want to hear all about them because they're Disney-sized dreams, Steve. And I, you know what? I'm all about Disney. It's We're about the Florida. field of dreams. It's field of dreams. Build it and they will they come. They will come, <laughs> absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about that and share with with us because this is exciting stuff okay so right now our physical headquarters is on the sun and fun grounds yes. uh, uh, in Lakeland but we have signed a lease to build a brand new world headquarters in Winter Haven at Gilbert Field wow. our association was founded in 1972 so we've been around over 45 years and we have never had a permanent home so I started dreaming one night and said, we need to have a permanent home. Okay. It has to be a place that helps to welcome the community in, mm -hmm. uh, welcome groups like EAA and AOPA and everyone else to come in and use our facility, yep. provide a conduit for young individuals to get involved in aviation, because I don't think there's enough of that with all mm -hmm. the fences and barriers that we have at airports today. Right. We've reached out to the Boy Scouts. We're going to create a, a Boy Scout and Girl Scout merit badge, seaplane merit badge. Don't forget badge. the Girl Scouts, yes, Steve. No, uh, don't forget merit those. Badge. Okay. Girls can fly too. But <laughs> uh, we will build a, a fully functional seaplane base at Gilbert Field in Winter Haven. Okay. Uh, it'll be the new home of the Sun and Fun Splash In, which right now they do not have a home for the event. Right, they don't. And then uh, we are going to give that seaplane base back to the city and the airport after we construct it. It'll have an event pavilion, a thousand feet of seaplane friendly shoreline, floating docks, an amphibious ramp with parking. Uh, the uh, city's fuel trucks can come across and do fueling in the water there. Wow. And then we'll have a cross the road taxiway where we actually cross, uh, we'll be able to taxi aircraft across an active road with railroad gates that come down. Yes. Uh, and then we'll have a 16,000 square foot facility on the airport proper uh, for events and education and advocacy and, and all the other missions that we're going to try to accomplish. That so. is, uh, and talk to me a little bit about the partnerships that you've already formed because I know that you said the design is ready, everything is ready. Uh, they've already looked at the ground, they've already done the soil tests, everything to make sure safety, obviously safety first. Um, can you share a little bit about some of the people that have partnered with you already to make this dream a reality? And, and are we looking at the next two years, uh, 12 months, 24 months? What are we looking at? I hope we are. Okay, I hope we're good. looking at two years. Good. Uh, so we're in the fundraising uh, uh, mode right now. Okay. Uh, the stipulations that we put forward when we said we're going to build this building is, so uh, the Seaplane Pilots Association is a C7. It's a membership organization. We tr charge membership dues. Okay. We did not want to burden the members with the cost of building this facility. So the ground rules that we set forward were that we will build the facility completely on donations outside of the member money. Okay. So we are in a fundraising campaign right now for six and a half million dollars. Wow. We hope to be done in 18 months. So we're, we're pretty aggressive on our goals there. That's all right. Uh, I want to be in the building inside of 30 months uh, okay. from, from today. Uh, that's very aggressive. Okay. Um, we've already have aircraft being donated to us Fantastic. Uh, that we have in storage. Uh, we're working with Whip Air. We're going to have a cutaway uh, float um, where you can retract the gear and, and see the insides of the operation. Awesome. Um, you know, a lot of the space will be dedicated to that educational As component. As you say, what a great educational opportunity. It, it will be. Because there's nothing, a book is one thing, but to see it live and in person is phenomenal. You know, there it's might great. even be a video editing suite and studio facility that Florida Aviation Network can use. I so. love that. I'll be there. I will be there. That's fantastic. Now, you know that was on camera, and that would be for posterity now, so we need a home. There you go. We've got it. Right. That is awesome. Now, let me ask you. You said that you had donations of planes. Are there other things that you're looking for? Um, computers? Are there other things that people can donate? I mean, obviously Absolutely. money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Money. So, we need to get the building built. We need that okay. six and a half million dollars okay. and and that's going to require some fundraising at some significant levels every donation helps whether okay. it's twenty dollars or a million dollars every little everything helps uh, but you know we can also offset that six and a half million dollars by donations of 
computers, by donations of the air conditioning and cooling units or any of the infrastructure that we need. Uh, if you, if someone has services that can help us install these, right. uh, the facility will be solar powered. Uh, I was going to say, we talked a little bit, and obviously as a teacher, especially my near and dear to science, um, talk a little bit about the LEED certification and eco-friendly. It this is. This is yeah. really going to be a cutting edge headquarters that I think will, will set the ground really the groundwork for future headquarters for other places. Talk to us a little bit about that. So it was really important, you know, as an advocacy organization and as we're out there trying to keep the waterways open for our pilots and for right. seaplanes to use the nation's waterways, one of the things that is a misnomer that we have to educate people on is that we're not environmentally friendly, that the airplanes pollute the water, uh, that, that we make right. more noise than we do, and that we have other in environmental impacts that, in all honesty, we don't have. We're actually okay. incredibly eco-friendly as a user group, uh, to the point that U.S. Fish and Wildlife actually operates a fleet of 58 amphibious seaplanes because they say it's the only motorized vehicle that does not contaminate their results of their scientific tests. So that's a pretty good yes. endorsement. Yes. But to take that a step further, I really wanted to demonstrate when we're talking to environmental groups, when we're talking to state and federal agencies about how eco-friendly we are, that we actually go a step further to the point that we make our, our building extremely eco-friendly, that we generate our own power, and we really lead by example. So we will have uh, solar covered parking uh, at the facility. Uh, we'll have a car charging station for Tesla cars. Tesla's, exactly. Uh, we'll have a fleet of bicycles. Uh, wow. All the environmental aspects of the interior of the building, everything we've done has, has been with a mindfulness of how do we create the least impact possible. And then one of the other things that this facility will allow us to do is to conduct environmental research on uh, how do we reduce the potential for the spread of invasive species from one body of water to another body of water? And that can be both aquatic plants and it yes. can be things like quagga mussels and zebra mussels yes. and things like that. Yep. So we are going to have the capacity with this new facility to even conduct some scientific testing and some research in these fields as well. That's amazing. You, you've, you've basically thought about, about everything. Now let me ask you, if people are interested, and you know we reach a wide range of individuals, not just the ones that are here watching us as we're filming, but and the ones here that are you know here in Sebring, um, is there a website or is there a place that people can go uh, to either donate or to learn more about this? Absolutely. So there's two websites. Uh, okay. So you can go to the, the primary website, which is the easiest to remember, seaplanes.org. Doesn't get any easier no. than that. Seaplanes, <laughs> plural, dot org. Got it. Uh, uh, and then the foundation site, which is the tax deductible foundation, and the foundation will actually build and own the building, and, okay. and the association will be a tenant. But uh, seaplanepilotsfoundation.org. Uh, and there's uh, a video talking about the project. There's still photos and renderings of the project. It discusses how we're going to use the facility, what the attributes are, some of the things that would be nice, like a high vac unit or the commercial kitchen, uh, educational materials, aircraft, whatever someone would like to donate, um, we can facilitate. There's probably, if, if you have it to donate, we probably can use, use it, it somewhere within the facility. Uh, Steve, I have to tell you, you know what, of course, being in Florida, you really are the Walt Disney of the Seaplane Pilots Association. Thank you. I mean that. And, yeah. and, you know, he was a dreamer and a doer, and he believed that. And I know this is going to become a reality for you. And oh, I, yeah. I can't wait. Thank I can't you. wait to see the progress. And one thing I wanted you, I've read so many things about you. And I, you know, really truthfully, you look really great for 224 years old <laughs> for all the things that you've done. I want to tell you, you look really good for that age. Um, but you have done so much. You are in articles. You are said to be the pilot's pilot. You are just amazing. Tell me, why would people, why would you want to fly a seaplane? What are some of the adventures you can have? Because I'm one of those people too. I want, a, I want an adventure. What is the lifestyle like? Well, you know, so there's a couple reasons why you would become a okay. seaplane pilot. Number one, we're going to make you a better pilot. 
Absolutely. Uh, stick and so uh, stick and rudder skills. You know, in the advent of the glass cockpits, more and more young pilots or more and more people that are getting their rating for the first time are learning in a glass cockpit environment. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing as a community is an erosion of pilot skills, of that basic airmanship sense. Uh, we're not seeing people get in and being used to, well, you know, they, they don't use the rudder pedals, their feet are on the ground. Uh, they don't have a flying knowledge. They're flying by the numbers. You know, this is what I'm supposed to do. They've got their, their head in a checklist or something and they're not necessarily looking out the airplane or feeling the airplane. So first and foremost, if you get a seaplane rating, if you design, if you, if you join our ranks as a seaplane pilot, you're gonna become a better pilot. And for that reason, we find that tail dragger pilots, tailwheel pilots that are tailwheel endorsed, make the transition faster, and okay. we can notice a, a, a huge difference in their skill levels. So whether it's getting a glider rating or a seaplane rating or your tailwheel uh, endorsement, I highly encourage pilots to go out there and get those ratings that are less common or that experience that's less common. But then once you have it, the world of adventure opens up. and the adventures that I've been so very, very fortunate to yeah. engage in. Uh, uh, landing on Mount McKinley uh, at 11,500 feet at the Climber Space Camp in a beaver on skis. Not seaplane, but yes, it, yes. it goes to that adventure level. So, you know, I've had the very good fortune of flying seaplanes in Alaska, uh, throughout the San Juan Islands in the northwest, north of, of Seattle. Uh, we fly in Maine every year. I just flew a Super Cub on Amphib floats uh, down from Maine to Florida, down the shoreline right. the whole way, which was just a great, great trip. Yes. Um, I got married in a Grumman Albatross. I know, yes, <laughs> yes, I remember. So, the only way you could come to my wedding was via seaplane. Uh, we had uh, 21 seaplanes and six Grumman Albatrosses in the water at the wedding. It was in a on a. We started from a remote beach. Um, on the shoreline of uh, Lake Mead behind the Hoover wow. Dam yeah. and took off of the, the lake and did the ceremony over the Grand Canyon in flight, Beautiful. which was amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, we just took 30, a uh, year and a half ago, we took uh, 30 of our members to Lake Como, Italy. Right. And uh, we basically took over one of the oldest flying clubs in the world. Uh, the seaplane base was built in 1913. No. Um, the original Schneider Cup races and, and all their, you know, Marchetti uh, speed record airplanes were all seaplanes. And you flew, didn't you fly the oldest seaplane? I did, yes. So Tell a, me a about Caproni that. 100, it was built in 1930. It's a wooden fabric airplane <laughs> with wood straight floats. Um, and uh, it had been, from the day it was manufactured, after it was manufactured in Italy, okay. it went to the Como seaplane base uh, as a military airplane. And it literally has been at the Como uh, seaplane base since the 1930s. And so it is today the oldest flying seaplane in the world and had the great fortune they allowed me to fly it. And uh, just, I, I, I dreaded landing. I did not Why? want to come in for okay. that last landing because I didn't want the experience to end. I bet. It was so cool. So you're, you're flying in Lake Como, Italy, one of the most beautiful places in the world yes. with the Swiss Alps as your backdrop. Uh, with a great group of people, and the Italians were so, so accommodating. Uh, Cesare uh, the, the, and Giorgio, the heads of the Aero Club over there, were just amazing. We actually stayed in the hangar. They have an apartment in the hangar. And you have to realize, awesome. this hangar was occupied by the Germans in World War II. It's all Mussolini. I mean, very, very historic what place history. here. history, right. And, um, and so we've flown seaplanes in uh, Australia, um, all throughout the United States and around the world. And one of the things that we're doing as an association is we want people to remember that flying can be an adventure. It's not necessarily from paved runway to paved runway right. to go from business meeting to business meeting. That we want you to see the, the hopefully the smile that I have, which yeah. I call the seaplane smile, yeah. because it changes your life. I cannot imagine not having this absolutely incredible, wonderful, amazing experience, you know, that my journey has been. And, and I, I just want to spread that and, and open other people to the experiences that we've been so fortunate to now, have. Now, you mentioned earlier, and I, I, it was an extraordinary story before we went on the air, and I thank you. 
Um, I believe it was a scholarship recipient. Yes. And a young lady, and of yes. course, uh, women in aviation, women in STEM are near and dear to my heart. And um, now you said that she she's paying it forward and she left her home in the Midwest and now lives in Alaska? Yeah, so we- What a great, tell me. Just two years ago, we okay. awarded her the Seaplane Rating Scholarship. Okay. And she ended up going, she was like, well, I don't want to go just anywhere. I want to go to Alaska and learn how to fly seaplanes in Alaska. So she went to a, a gentleman named Don Lee and up in Talkeetna, Alaska, which is where the, all the climbers for Mount McKinley kind of use as a base camp, okay. their last hub before they go climb the mountain. Amazing backdrop, amazing location. And so she did her scholarship with Don Lee, who's kind of one of the super dude amazing alaska bush pilot guys well next to you but okay <laughs> well, that's no, fine all right no that's i'm all right. humbled <laughs> by these guys i am so humbled by these guys and so she did her rating and she liked it so much that she said is there any opportunity for me to possibly work for you and maybe someday i'll be good enough to become a cfi and and help pass on what what i learned here mm -hmm. and she has already uh, done 200 seaplane, or no, I'm sorry, 100 seaplane ra ratings in two years. So she has trained from our scholar, receiving our scholarship, never having thought that she would be a seaplane CFI. It changed the entire course of, of her career path. Yes. She became a seaplane CFI in Alaska, and she has now to date trained over 100 seaplane pilots. That's a tremendous story, and That's you're going to see her. Yes. I understand that. Yeah, we, I'll now, see when her. Do you, in, when do you head to Alaska? Yeah, first week of May. Actually, okay. I, I go up twice. Uh, last week of April, right after Sun and Fun, we okay. go up and we do a preseason uh, safety seminar for the seaplane pilots. Excellent. So we host that uh, at the University of Alaska in Anchorage. And then after that, a week after that, uh, we have the Airmen show up there, uh, which wow. is the big bush pilot show, which is just a tremendous, tremendous now, show. Now, talk to me a little bit, because obviously the Florida Aviation Network, um, a part of our you know, foundation is safety. And not only, obviously, you've got the love for the seaplanes and the adventure, but talk to me about, you just mentioned, you do briefings on safety. Do you travel all over and do that, Steve? I've never asked you that question. <laughs> so I do about 50 safety seminars and workshops a year. Wow. Uh, again, across no the country at these, at these major events. So okay. we do everything from Seaplanes 101, which is basically a uh, one-hour in a you know, very encapsulated uh, ground school for what you're going to experience okay. when you do the seaplane rating. Okay. Uh, but I also do flying safe in and around Florida, and it's Excellent. not limited to seaplane topics. Fantastic. You know, in Florida here, we're surrounded by water. We have the Everglades. We have open spaces. That's right. There are a lot of considerations that pilots should make and yeah. not take for granted when yeah. they're flying around Florida. So we do one called flying safe in and around Florida. What do you need to know? How do you how do you maintain safety flying over the water to say Key West or right. the Bahamas or, right. or anywhere? Uh, but we do don't leave home without it. Uh, so I have a, a day pack that I carry with me everywhere okay. I go. I don't fly without it. Excellent. And it has, depending on where I'm flying, what the mission, what region of the country, it is loaded with different items that I think are crucial to safety. And, okay. and these are things that I was in special operations in the Air Force in the, in the 1980s, yeah. and we worked with AC-130 gunships, and we were always operating in very remote, not necessarily friendly places, right. and, and we had to be prepared for if we did have to go somewhere unintended as right. far as in landing, right. how are we going to survive? So through the years of flying these airplanes around the world and the military experience, we've rolled this into a bunch of items that people don't necessarily think of that you should have with you and, and scenarios that not only in a off airport emergency landing scenario, okay. but what about if you just have a bad day? What if you have a mechanical failure? What right. if there is an airport closure that was your intended destination and you have to go to an alternate? You Are you prepared to go to that alternate and maybe spend the night Right. And get home. Yeah. So we do that. Uh, we have a whole host of these uh, forums and workshops that I conduct around the. That's uh, that is amazing. Now let me ask you: out of you know, you're definitely a pilot's pilot. 
you are the master of the strange birds, for <laughs> sure. On that, I also read about you. Do you have a favorite? I've never asked you that either, Do I and have I'm a interested favorite? now. I have to ask you. <laughs> See, I could just talk to you for hours, Steve. I want you to know. But do you have a favorite? I don't. Okay. And it's so hard. So I have airplanes that I favor, but I don't okay. have a favorite. Okay. Are you willing to share? Or is it is that classified information? No, it's not. Okay. I'm so just checking. I, I, you know, here we're in Sebring. Right. And the air cam is manufactured yes. here in Sebring. Phil Lockwood. Yes. Phil Lockwood is also the chairman of the Seaplane Pilots Association, so this is not a shameless plug okay, for good. Phil Lockwood and good. his product. Exactly. I must establish that. <laughs> if you have not flown an air cam, I have. Do it's yourself awesome. a favor yes. and find one to fly. Yes. It will be a life changing experience. It is. So I am a huge fan, and again, not a plug for okay. Phil and his business. Okay. It is a plug for the amazing airplane. Yep. Uh, I love the air cam okay. uh, because it's a real flying experience. It's a real stick and rudder airplane. Yes. Everything above your waist is, is outside it's unless outside. you have the new enclosed canopy. It's kind of like a canoe. Yeah, it is, it's the flying canoe. canoe. Yes. I've heard that r reference before. Yes, I <laughs> that's in layman's terms, uh, right? I have a Super Cub. I love the Super Cub. Yes. The Grumman Albatross I have a massive yeah. love affair with. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a truly a tragedy that more people haven't been able to experience what it's like to fly a flying boat. Yeah. The experience of landing in the water in a Grumman Albatross and hearing those big radio engines barking and seeing the wave of water come over the passenger windows when you yeah. land. It's such a magical experience and, and it's truly a tragedy that more people haven't been able to yeah. enjoy that. So I hope at some point in my life that I'll have the financial wherewithal to have an albatross that okay. I can open up to have more people enjoy that experience. And the beauty is, Steve, you're going to have the headquarters to <laughs> yes. do it. Yes. And I tell you what, Steve, it is always, it is absolutely an honor. And it is, I am so humbled by you and everything oh, no, you've done. Thank you. And I can't thank you enough for always taking the time and being so gracious to talk to us. Oh, no, and thank, thank you. thank you for ins not only inspiring me, those of us that might be 50 or but thank you for that, but also inspiring the younger generation. And mm -hmm. I know um, students at the Florida, at Central Florida Aerospace Academy, at Sun and Fun, anyone who comes in contact with oh, you. And you. Steve, I'm going to hit you up for that ride. Yeah, we need to do that. That's long overdue. It is. So yeah, absolutely. We're going to get that taken care of. Absolutely. Well, Steve, we are here at Sebring Regional Airport. And we are going to invite all of you, please come the seaplane to come see Steve, Seaplanes Pilots Association. Sign up, absolutely. If you've got a PPL, he wants you to sign up. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely, to your career track. We've got a scholarship for you. And we just hope that you come and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful day. My name is Lori Bradner. I'm with the Florida Aviation Network. And we are here celebrating 14 years of the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo at Sebring Regional Airport. Come see us today. I promise you, you won't want to miss it.